Yes guys, if you didn't know it, Nintendo attacked Vim Slayer and this is actually a big 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 project that is like 1997 online on the internet and there are so many preservated games inside. It's actually a huge collection of not only games but actually also like the description of games. It's actually a perfect preservation of any game that is like very very old. And I get it right, like not all of you are informed 100% about what is happening inside the Nintendo scene. You hear once in a while that Nintendo took down like something new like Yuzu. This is actually more huge and it's actually more shocking and you need to know that this isn't like actually piracy connected okay so it's not shocking like the piracy scene it's actually shocking the nintendo fans themselves because you need to know that you know like the games which are here preserved in vim slayer are actually games that aren't supported in any kind of way from nintendo anymore those guys here are actually legends you need to see that without those preservations those games would be dead you can't find like any place anymore where you can buy or purchase those games they're just killing themselves vim slayer and the legends like them who are like preservating like all those different ROMs from the early games are actually doing a free service for Nintendo. In the summer of 2018, the best-selling console in June of that year wasn't the Nintendo Switch or the Sony PlayStation 4, it was the NES Classic, a miniature version of the NES that cost $60 and came with 30 classic NES titles. And it sold. Yeah, man, I was, I was one of those guys who had like a big brother who just purchased one of those uh, consoles and I, I never was able to play on it. I, I really needed to sneak to the TV and play on my own without anyone seeing it. So... <laughs> and it sold well. But it was a so huge well thing. So well that Nintendo underestimated the demand. The NES Classic was frequently sold out and resellers took advantage of the FOMO from those who weren't able to get one. The NES Classic underneath the covers is nothing more than a low-powered ARM device that runs an in-house Nintendo-developed emulator and ROMs. Nintendo would follow this up with the Super NES Classic, which was just as successful, and just like any other mini console at the time, it would be quickly hacked to run just about any emulator and ROM that you wanted. Enjoy. Yeah, the, the, scene, the scene started all the way back then, um, uh, basically on Nintendo. Like, Nintendo was the first victim of the piracy scene or the homebrew scene, etc. In July 18 of the same year it's as the NES huge. Classic, Nintendo would file a lawsuit against the operator of a popular console ROM site known as loveroms.com. According to Nintendo, the sites are among the most notorious online hubs for pirated games. And just three days later, Love Roms was shut it down. It got shut down. And Paradise, out of fear of being targeted by Nintendo, also ceased providing ROMs on their website. In July of 2019, Nintendo there. went scorched earth on another popular ROM sharing site known as ROM Universe, stating the company alleges ROM Universe is built largely on brazen and mass scale infringement. It was shut down shortly after. And fast forward <laughs> oh, no. to today, Vim's Lair is the latest in a string of high profile ROM sites that have been a target of Nintendo and their quest to eradicate. Yeah, as you can see, Vim's Lair has been asked to remove many games from the vault on behalf of Nintendo, Sega, Lego and the ESA. While most of these games and the hardware to play them haven't been sold, people are actually forced to pirate the games if they want to play it. Because you can't find it anymore. It's like impossible to purchase those games. You, there is like a big demand, but no one is actually giving out those games. So the only thing we have right now, so the only opportunity for you, if, if you would want to play such a masterpiece from the early days, is to actually go to such a preserve website and get like the games from there and it's actually quite quite huge what's what is happening here and i'm not sure why nintendo don't, don't, don't make something like this it's it feels like as if they just don't want to get like any money for it and i don't understand it because it's like don't preserve games okay well then just sell it to me why should i <laughs> like what, hey, the, what the hell bro piracy in the case of vim's lair nintendo along with sega lego and a group of companies who formed the esa was responsible now I do want to be very clear that Nintendo does have every right to protect what's theirs and ROM sites yeah, do indeed person. host illegal ROMs, but it's in my... Yeah, I mean 100%. Does Nintendo have the right to do this? Yes. Would it be better if Nintendo is selling it because people would actually purchase it and stop going to pre-surf websites or ROM websites to download them? Yes, it would be definitely better for them. But do they do it? No. Why should they? <laughs>
But it's in my opinion that Nintendo is causing irreparable damage to a community that's almost single-handedly kept game preservation efforts alive for decades. Yeah, they're, they're actually legends, guys. Like, 100%, they're like good people, even for Nintendo. They're like, they're like supporting them, actually. So sometimes I really am not sure what they think. And we're going to it's, talk it's about like why very, very I'm generally weird. concerned about the future of video game preservation after a quick word from today's sponsor. Nintendo has a well-documented stance against emulation and ROMs. In 1999, when Ultra HLE, the first public Nintendo 64 emulator released, they called emulation illegal. But after it was tried in court and emulators were found to actually be legal, Nintendo nice. changed their strategy. If they can't take down the emulators... Damn, I didn't notice, but uh, Nintendo actually tried to make uh, emulation illegal. Holy macaroni, I definitely, I definitely need to research more about it because this sounds very interesting, actually. If they can't take down the emulators, then why not go after the sites that host the ROMs? Now, you might be thinking to yourself, MVG, Nintendo just took down Yuzu. That's an emulator, so what are you talking about? Nintendo did show- Well, yeah, to be fair, what Yuzu did is actually having a TOTK ROM on their Patreon membership and they- and not only that, they actually also had it behind a paywall. They actually tried to put an S-tier new game, like literally uh, one of the newest games out there. It's like, what the hell were they thinking? They had like literally the ROM inside their patron, guys. It's, you know, it's like really bad what happens to Yuzu, but so yo, who is doing this? What are you talking this? about? Nintendo did shut down Yuzu. However, the DMCA law was never tried in court. Yuzu took an L to keep emulation legal. Yeah, well, I think it never was going into court because Yuzu knew absolutely what was going on. They knew they would lose and because of that, they just didn't try it because, you know, like the summary of all the costs would just go way higher, I think, in my opinion. So they, they just accept their loss because that was a big loss from them. They were just too greedy, bro. It doesn't make Which any sense. Which I think sense. everyone can agree was the right thing to do. But let's get back to ROMs, which is the main topic of this video. I mentioned that Nintendo has every right as the copyright holder to remove what belongs to them. But did you notice that Nintendo is pushing for the removal of the entire sites, threatening the preservation of ROMs that don't even belong to them? But MVG, what about archive.org I hear you ask? That's never going to go away. Let's stop and discuss archive.org for a moment. And while I do agree that with the loss of Love ROMs, Vimslayer and other sites, as long as archive.org exists, then everything will be fine. But it's really not the case. First of all, let's talk about why Nintendo hasn't gone after archive.org in the same way as they have with the other sites. Well, it's because archive.org has a DMCA exemption to help with the archival of vintage software. It's vital to make proper archival copies of these artifacts. The problem with this exemption is it's not forever. Every three years, the Copyright Office holds a rulemaking proceeding to determine the exemption status. And for example, if one year they rule against the DMCA exemption, the site is then exposed to the same takedowns as any other ROM site. It's as simple as that. Nothing lasts forever, except for the ridiculous copyright laws when it comes to video games. And if you didn't know, here in the United States, video game copyright lasts for the entire life of the creator, plus an additional 70 game. years. And Nintendo themselves have been outspoken opposing the DMCA exemption on archive.org. If and when there is a reversal of the DMCA exemption, Nintendo will be the first company to strike. Definitely. 100%. So what can we do about this? ROM sites are illegal, but can we dump our own games? Is it even legal to do that? I'm not a lawyer, but my understanding of dumping is that it's perfectly legal to dump your own games as long as you're not circumventing any protection measures as stated by the DMCA. In general, what this means is yeah, that but, anything up to around but the who wants generation to do this, of guys? Who wants to do this? You have like five different engines which, you, which you're using for that. You have at the very end a dumped game from an old school game. I mean, I don't want to do this, man. Uh, once again, they, they just should like do a service online um, in which you can like um, connect the newest gen of consoles with it and at the very end just can download everything. Maybe give a price, give, give a little price or maybe make even a SaaS out of it. And if you don't know what a SaaS is, a SaaS is actually a software as a service. And this is actually the best business thing you can do. It's like actually Netflix is doing it, Spotify is doing it and gaming in the gaming industry right now tries also to do the exact same thing. It's like actually giving a service out for that in, for that you are paying monthly, you know, like a subscription. It's like very, very similar to Patreon. You, you actually pay for that. You will 
get all the time like the games which you want to play. You can put like a bunch of consoles inside with all the freaking games they had on it and then at the very end they gave it out for like 20 bucks per month. I don't know. I don't know. Make it five actually for that many more people are going inside of it. But they would do actually a big, big, big service with it. They would definitely get actually 90% of the ROMs guys out of there because because the service itself is just worth it. You know what I mean? You know, like many, many people wouldn't get uh, to do like all those stressy things which they actually need to do right now for getting actually ROMs on their consoles if they would have like a decent service. And who wants to do this? It's legal to, to, to do this as it seems like, but who wants to do this? No one wants to do it. You know what I mean? Consoles would be perfectly legal to make backups of. Anything beyond that is a gray area. But for this discussion, let's just assume that all ROMs can be done by individuals who own originals and it's perfectly legal to do that. So, if it's okay to download and use an emulator and dump your own games, then what's the problem? Preservation lives on. After all, I'm making a legal backup of my games. The problem is, have you ever tried to dump a NES, Super NES, Genesis or old game cartridge? It's not an easy yeah, thing to do. Yeah, there we go. You need some type of dumping hardware like this thing. It's, it's no easy thing to do, like you said. Yeah, 100%. Because look at it. How much this cost is this? is the Retro 2. It can dump SNES and Genesis ROMs. And I even have Probably an adapter for N64 and like Game Boy. The problem is, <laughs> yeah, look at these it. aren't readily available. Then it's available. second device for They're it. almost never in stock when you need one. And have you tried dumping yeah, NES game cartridges? Bucks for only tried one. a few different dumpers and all of them are terrible. The best option is to use a dumping tool with the analog NT Mini, which isn't made anymore. And back in the old days, way before FPGA based dumping tools, disc uh. and cartridge copiers were all the rage. Now I've used disc copiers on the channel before. These devices were also successfully blocked in US courts as illegal. Now, of course, it was still very possible to import them via Hong Kong electronic stores such as Lick Sang, but you start to see the frustration. Disc-based games like the Dreamcast, OG Xbox, and GameCube aren't really much better either. You can use either a specific drive with a hacked firmware, or you can use a hacked console. It shouldn't be this complicated yeah, to make backups no of your own games. This. And yet it is. Why not just leave everything up to Nintendo? After all, they did successfully launch the Virtual Console. Yeah, once again, it's it's a service issue, 100%. 100%, 100 the Wii, is the service Wii U, issue. and recently the NSO service on the Nintendo Switch. Not only this, they have a very long history of providing backward compatibility options for hardware going as far back as the Game Boy Color. Nintendo can't Whoa. be trusted. The Virtual Console on the Wii was a very good service they provided. When it was all said and done, there was a total of 427 Virtual Console titles available on the service in North America. And in 2019, the Wii U online service was shut down. So let's move over True. to the Wii U. Many games had to be ported to the Wii U Virtual Console, and there's a total of 318 titles available in North America. It's a pretty significant reduction. And of course, as we huh. know, just recently, the Wii U store was also closed. But of course, now we come to the Nintendo Switch Online service, which is the service-based Netflix-style model Nintendo has always wanted to provide. And the smart money suggests that Nintendo will transfer over the NSO with your Nintendo account to future Nintendo hardware, including the Switch 2. This, of course, is a good move. As of the making of this video, there's only a paltry 275 titles available on the NSO service. And we only get a very small drip feed of new games every single month. I remember yeah, back in the days true. of the Wii Virtual Console, we were getting games every single week. The that's Nintendo true. Switch has sold over 155 million units, but Nintendo is all but doing the absolute minimum to offer retro games to their customers. The number yeah. of old classic games Nintendo... That, that's it once again, like it's definitely a service issue. If they would provide any kind of service, it would be so huge. Nintendo is providing on their hardware services I mean, we all would do shrinking backflips, with every single generation. Ooh. And you've probably <laughs> noticed that every single month people are asking for games like Chrono Trigger or Secret of Evermore on the service. How many years will people need to wait before they show up, if ever? There's no guarantee that anything will ever appear on the NSO. As someone who does work on commercial emulation projects, I can tell you categorically that many publishers see value in partnering with companies like Limited Run or Digital Eclipse to help bring back their back catalog. The reality is, Nintendo Switch Online is just another revenue stream for Nintendo's bottom line. The emulation quality, while decent enough, doesn't hold a candle to community-developed efforts that run on their own hardware. 
the emulators that the homebrew community built on the Wii, Wii U, 3DS, and the Nintendo Switch are far superior to anything that Nintendo has ever provided. Yeah, it's it's like actually quite sick. If you are comparing like the emulators which like third party guys, like the fans were doing with the emulators N Nintendo themselves were doing, like the ones that are for free from the community are so much better than the ones you need to pay for. It's actually quite quite sick and I'm not sure why because they have so many employees who are able to work like daily on those things and and they don't even provide like a lot of things there inside. It's yeah. It's it's very interesting to see this. The community and I really don't downloads know what is happening. shouldn't all be labeled as filthy pirates who deserve what's coming to them. It's the resellers who attempt to profit from them that really should be targeted. If then Yeah, 100%. Like the guys who are actually preserving like the games and doing the emulators are actually guys who want just to hold like the lifespan of all those different or old school games and old school consoles up, you know? They, they want to, they, they, they just want to alive everything once again and they give like once again life inside all those different things. It's, it's actually like on the Nintendo Switch, before the homebrew scene, like many, many people had like their Switch full on dust and once they found out about the homebrew scene, they were just checking out where their Switch is, checking out if they are able to homebrew it and after they homebrew it, they had so much fun with it that they, once again, did like a lot of things with the console they actually purchased from Nintendo. So Nintendo should actually watch more the fan base because what they are doing is actually legends work. That really so, should yeah. be targeted. If Nintendo really cared about ROMs, they'd be taking down every single seller on Amazon who's selling knockoff handhelds with 10,000 games on them. I can literally buy one right now and get it delivered tomorrow. And if it wasn't for ROMs, fan translations would not exist. And this is something that people pour their hearts and souls into to provide localization efforts to games that were never released yeah. in that particular country. But it doesn't even stop there. Things like full color translations, widescreen mods, ROM hacking mm. built out of completely new games. 60 FPS mods. Updating and adding quality of life features, even yeah. building D makes of games. Anytime yeah. a remaster is announced, people ask what quality of life features will there be? Well, if ROMs didn't exist, that would be a big fat zero. And I'll fill you yep. in on a secret. Commercial retro game collection yep. collections I've been involved with, we frequently work with ROM hacking experts in the community. Everyone does who works on retro collections. Experts in reverse engineering, ROM hacking and localization efforts are essential to bringing back old games to modern times. The FPGA yeah. community just like saw I said the before, release like, of like the because NC of that, the lifespan of old school games is just going further on. You know, it doesn't stop like after 15 years, it will go to 50 years. You know what I mean? The release it's of the N64 sick. Mr. Core, an incredible piece of work that will surely benefit N64 hardware preservation, but it still requires ROMs to play. It's easy to say that the internet is vast and ROMs will never be eradicated, but the reality is every high profile ROM site that's shut down. It's a blow to preservation or the ESA to be in charge of preservation efforts. They've failed in doing so time and time again. Their yeah. motives aren't to preserve, rather to control. They make it clear that they will go after any ROM site that gets in their crosshairs. And unfortunately for Vim's lair, this was be kind of moronic TikTokers who were playing Pokemon on their iPhones via the Delta emulator, thinking that it was cool, which clearly got the attention of the ESA. If Nintendo was serious about their history, they'd provide their entire library of ROMs on a service. This could be either a rental or a purchase and run on any legal emulator on your PC. I know it sounds crazy, but think about it. If Nintendo set up their own Vim's Lair, which had checks and balances, people would buy those ROMs because yeah. they know that it's something that is not illegal. Sites that's like Vim's it. Lair, modders, fan- That's it, it's a service issue, 100%. 100%, you can't convince me otherwise. Translations and ROM hacks should not be punished. These talented people are what the industry needs right now. Many ROM hackers and modders got their start in the industry from their hobbyist work, and it would be a shame to see all that disappear. But these are just one man's thoughts and opinions, and I do know that this topic is polarizing for many of you. So if you did make it to the end of this episode, I do thank you for listening. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I understand that a lot of people don't like emulation and ROMs, and a lot of people obviously do, but I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. But we are going to leave it here for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye for now. Yeah, man, that was actually a 
quite sick video and it actually also is booming up from a modern vintage gamer. I believe people should back up every single Nintendo game in existence. Nintendo doesn't care about history. Well, it's not just ROMs either. Nintendo once also tried uh, to get old Nintendo Power issues taken off Internet Archive even though they themselves offer no way to view them. Nintendo would rather burn their own history than let people see it for free. Yeah, that's that's 100% for sure. Yeah, it's actually a very interesting topic and I just wanted to react to this video because I think it's... It actually fits like quite sick inside uh, um, the channel, Bedroom Gaming. And yeah guys, let me know in, let me know in the comments what you think about all these different things here because it's actually a quite huge thing and... There will be definitely more things in coming about it. And yeah, we will see what we will get out of it. Alright guys, don't you ever forget to smile. My name is you. I hope I'll see you in the next video. Peace.